Well, by hook or by crook, we are on the road to rock. Dean Roberts from one of my favorite bands of all time, Leather Wolf, is joining us. And Dean, we've been through it. We've been down the technology rabbit hole, and we're finally here, and we're making it happen. How about it, man? Uh, how about 2023 and technology? We we finally fought through it. Well, let's see here. It's it's 2.35, so I guess we're done. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, <laughs> thank you so much, Dean. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Uh, Get yeah, the new yeah. Album. <laughs> At least we got a new little backdrop for my head here, you know, so it's kind of cool. Well, it is, and it's a true pleasure. We've uh, had some issues with Zoom. We've moved over to StreamYard. We're making it work, and it's a true pleasure. This is the first time, I mean, of all the bands, I've been doing this show, Dean, 10 years. Every band from, from Def Leppard to Kiss to Motley Crue to Twisted Sister, this is the first Leather Wolf experience that we've had here, and... uh how fitting that it's you, founding member of Leather Wolf, and just one of my all-time favorite drummers. It's just sort of fitting that it's finally cool, happening. Yeah, it's just, uh, you know, time. We're all getting older. <laughs> Things happen. And yet Leather Wolf, uh, back in 2022, you guys released a killer new album that you're still release, have been releasing singles for. It's Kill the Hunted. My goodness, what a return to form this album was. Just talk about the last year and what it's been like, the feedback from this album, and what it's been like kind of, um, you know, just you've been releasing singles for it. It's kind of the culmination, huh? You guys fought through COVID. This album comes out, and it's gotten so many great reviews, man. Um, just a killer album. Well, thank you. I'm proud of it. You know, I'm the last guy left, and um, it was just a, it was a little tricky doing it, but I just had some good help from Rob Math and Keith Adamiak and Barry Sparks and Luke Cohen that, had, that helped us finish this thing, you know? So um, me and Robbie had a lot of fun, you know, working on it and making it what it is, which kind of made it um, as cool as, as it is for guitar. You know, I've always, I've always liked love guitar stuff, you know? And so <laughs> I got to sit down and just mess around with some ideas and, with Robbie and, you know, it all just worked out. And at the end of the day, you know, we were just really proud of what we did and just, we were glad that it, uh, that it still fit in the heavy metal realm and it still had a vibe of leather wolf, even though they're, they're all, those guys are gone. And, um, it, it, uh, it was just fun. You know, that part of it was fun. You talk about guitars and, if guitars are what you're looking for, we know, Dean, that Leather Wolf is, is the band for you. How difficult is it to kind of replicate that? I mean, Leather Wolf was such a, at the forefront of that triple guitar attack that like now you see it in Alice Cooper's band, Iron Maiden does it. Judas Priest tried to go back out, I think, with just one guitarist a few years ago, and that was met with cynicism and anger and so they decided not to do that but how when you're when you guys have sort of duplicate you know th that sound was such a part of you and to be able to still be able to pull that off how difficult is that to do um it just depends on which songs you're talking about but but um you know back in the 80s you know we practiced a lot so those guys had it pretty dialed you know so, so when it comes to um, today and replicating that type of uh, energy and vibe, it just takes a little more practice to get it up to that level, you know. And um, it's 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 definitely not an easy task. And you know, these songs, they're not like Alice Cooper. They're not like Judas. Uh, I mean, the old school Judas, yeah. But they're they're a little bit more intricate guitar playing, you know, to do it. You know, not that those guys aren't killer. Um, um, but there's this is Leather Wolf has always been different. You know, yeah. it's always been a different, a different level of guitar ability to, to pull it off, you know. Well, it was done perfectly, and I think a great example of that is your latest single. Uh, as this starts playing in the background, uh, that was Thunder. But what I'm talking about is only the wicked. That was the light last single you guys released for this. Yeah, what? yeah, yeah. It was uh some fans were wanting it and um and so we just did it, uh, and it was it was cool. We're gonna probably do one more here real quick, and we're thinking just something more heavy metal, you know, something something more legit, legitly heavy. <laughs> <laughs> so. 
Well, but it's such a great song, and it's it just like this album. It's it's what it's what I the big best compliment I could pay it is that it's Leather Wolf, and yet it's an evolution. I'd say it's the evolution of, of Leather Wolf, you know, as a band. Obviously, no band, no musician is what they you know the exact same that they were. 40 years ago from a writing standpoint, from a playing standpoint, bands evolve. And I'd say the best compliment I could give it is that it sounds like Le leather wolf, but an evolution of where the band you would see at in 2023. Well, it's hard to get older and get better. <laughs> you know, usually, usually people get older and they get lazy. You know, I'm, I'm not that guy. You know, I, I think I'm playing better than I ever played before. And um, I just wish I got to play more so I could even get better. But, um, um, you know, Jeff, Jeff is a good songwriter and, um, it, it's, it's still got the level five because of Jeff. And, um, I'm just glad I was able to do what I could do with, with the guys I had. And, and it actually turned out good. I mean, you know, cause I, you know, for me, people will say like, well, what, what do you like better? It's not street ready. And I, and, um, every time I, re I do a record and it comes out, it's my favorite record for a little bit of time, you know? Yeah. You know, even like, um, you know, like World Asylum. World Asylum was my favorite record for a freaking long time. And, you know, Street Ready was my favorite record for like maybe a year. Um, the first record was like my favorite record for probably like three or four years. <laughs> yeah. You know, and so it's it's weird. So it's been a year for this, this, uh, this, this Kill the Hunted record. But I still, I still, I still enjoy it. You know, it still sounds good and I still like the music, you know. It's tremendous, and I, I'm such a fan of the band that I love to see bands putting, you know, out music that I that are, were from the '80s. It's amazing, and talk about the vocals because to me, that's the key when it comes to Leather Wolf. Uh, you know, we know Michael had such a distinct voice, uh, just a tremendous singer, but Keith has come into this this fold here and has been around now for you know for about four years. Just talk about what he's brought to the mix here because he, to me, has knocked it out of the park. And we talk about the single that you did, Thunder, re you know, the re-recorded version of Thunder, the classic Leatherwolf song. And it's like, that's a measuring stick right there. If you could pull that song off, you know it's going to hit. And it, he did it and he's done it admirably. And he's brought so much to, to this album, I think. Well, Keith, um, he's a killer singer, man. He he can sing metal. He's like a he's like a front man for, the, for, for, for metal, you know? And he's got some balls and some power behind his voice. Mike, Mike is a great singer, and um, he's got his own style. But that's that's part of his little thing is um, he's just got his own sound, you know. And it just kind of worked back in the day um, with those those things, you know. But 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 as we did the swap, I just I just wanted to be more metal. I wanted to be the singer to be sound heavy metal. I wanted to. I didn't want to write about whiny stuff. I was you know <laughs> to write about stuff that you know has a little value and it's a little more aggressive, you know, but not degrading, you know? And so Keith was the guy and, you know, we didn't have a meeting or nothing. He just wrote stuff that was, I liked, you know, which is kind of cool. And um, then you get Rob Math playing guitar, you know, he's just, he's just killer. And you, you get, you get Barry Sparks playing bass, you know, it's just a whole different deal. And then you get to play with Joel Holstra, you get to play with, with George Lynch, you know, we got a record coming out that um, so those guys played some songs on, you know, and Joel played played uh, played on Thunder, and um, it's just you know doing it with different guys and it actually sounded sound sounding good, you know, because it could uh, you could easily hook up with somebody and it just not go well. <laughs> You're right. You know, which happened a couple times with some other guitar players, and it wasn't that they were bad or anything. It's just uh. It just wasn't the vibe, you know. It just didn't have, you know, you know what I liked. I mean, Joel did a leak a lead uh, for Gypsies, and um, and it's just killer. Yeah, you know, it, it sounds like a classic Leatherwolf lead and a classic part. Even though I rewrote the part, you know, I, I kept the same melody, but I uh, I just got rid of some stuff and just put a lead in there because I thought it sounded better, you know. And and Joel also did that lead in 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 um. Thunder, the first lead that Kerry used to do. And I was just like, man, it's just killer. He just did a great job. It's it's really hard. It's really hard to go back and top what was originally done with any music, you know, because people are so used to how it sounded, you know, what it did, you know. So even even as I redid stuff, it's like 
you know, first I listened to it, I ah, it's okay. But then over time, you get past that stuff and you start going, you know what, it's actually pretty good. What's been the challenge for you when you've talked about, um, you know, having to replace members and just keeping this entity alive? Has there ever been a point where you're like, we just can't do leather wolf anymore. That's, that's in the past. Or is it, this always been something that like you were going to forge on no matter what? Um, we're always going to forge on no matter what. And it's, it's all going to depend on the industry and the shows and stuff or how long we keep doing it, you know, pretty much. Yeah. And you have a show planned for April at the whiskey. One of my favorite venues. Was that a venue you guys played quite a bit? Uh, in the in the old days when everyone was playing the whiskey in the 80s? Does that still bring back good memories? We played there a few times. We played the Roxy. We played the Troubadour. We played, uh, you know, all those places, you know, back in the day. And it, it's just, it just was fun. It was Hollywood, you know? That's what you had to, you had to, you had to, you had to make it there, to, you know, to get onto a label or to, to get that stuff moving, you know? And to be able to go back there, you guys have a show there in April. How many shows realistically would you like to try to do in, in a year if you're in a perfect world i'd like to be playing you know three nights three to four nights a week all all year long until i got sick of it and um mainly just because i think that this band would just get so good you know playing mm. all the classical stuff i mean the thing about leather wolf is uh there's not like one or two good songs there's like 30 right <laughs> yes and, and and those 30 songs you actually got to figure out the parts the, the guitar players got to learn how to play the, 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 um, the, the scale or the, 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 the fundamental playing it. And, and that just takes a little bit of time. And then once you learn the part, you got to play it with three guys. Mm -hmm. so that takes another, another, it just takes time for those guys to get dialed. You know, it, it took a long time, you know, the original leather wolf guys to, um, before they got to a place where they felt comfortable in what they were doing, you know? Do you, I mean, this, you talked about Barry Sparks and like what a iconic bass player. I mean, one of my favorite lineups with Ted Nugent was him, he and uh, Mick Brown. Uh, of course, Barry and Mick were both in Dawkin as well at the time. Barry did a, had a great run with Dawkin as well. But Barry, man, what, just talk about that relationship with him. Cause he's, he's one of my favorite bass players. I think he's vastly underrated and uh, what a, what a treat to have him. Well, yeah, I was talking to I, I met him through Rob Math because because him and Rob used to play back in the nineties, you know, and um and, and you know Robbie calls him the, the the monster. He's just a monster, and and when you when you uh when you just listen to how he plays, he he's got his own vibe and he's like he's great, and and just that I got the sh chance to play with him was just freaking killer, you know, because it all just it went down pretty quick, you know, finding the bass player. You know, once me and Pat and Mike parted ways and, um, you know, the bass player, uh, Barry made a call or Rob made a call. Barry was in and it was actually Chris, Chris Leibengut and he was in. So he started recording and then I just was talking to one of my friends and he knew this uh, couple of singers, kid singers, you know, younger, younger men. And, um, you know, two days later, Keith is over singing, um, only the wicked, you know? Yeah. You know, me and Robbie spent all night just working on the melodies and figuring out the words and all that stuff for that song. And um, you know, we were figuring, you know, it's a metal song, but it's got a it's got a more of a pretty voice in the verses. So mm. you, have, you have to have, you have to have a few different voices to actually pull that puppy off. You know, that's true. That's I hadn't thought of it that way. That is absolutely the case. Um, I want to make sure everybody. I mean, this this album is so good, and to, there's so many tremendous fans that we talk to all you know, all the time that are such Leatherwolf fans and want to make sure that they know the album's obviously still available. You can go to uh, leatherwolfmetal.com. That's where you can get it. It's on all the streaming platforms. You can go to the YouTube, check out the videos. But, you know, the truth of it is, you know, my, I, I used to work at a CD store. And so I had these mentors, Randy and Bert, they were like, you know, I'm only 39. So these guys are older than me. And like, I learned so much. And that's where I discovered Leatherwolf. And I discovered Street Ready. And I got into real big into a lot of the, uh, you know, the, the, the 80s rock scene and a lot of the rock bands and a lot of the metal that was coming from the early 80s, whether it be, you know, Angel Witch, Leather Wolf, Metallica, on and on and on, Wasp, Street Ready, man. I want to hear this the story of that, that recording because I think you guys recorded that in the Bahamas. And Michael Wagner, what a legend to, for him to do that. And hey, 
has his stamp written all over it. Just talk about the recording of Street Ready. And did you know that this was sort of the one that was going to take you to the next level at the time? Um. Okay, uh, Street Ready. Um, I think the songs are pretty freaking phenomenal on it. Yes. I, um, I think the production it was was a little bit mediocre. Um, and plus, we were pretty young when we did that, you know. But you know, you got you got to get a hats off to Jeff. You know, Jeff, he wrote a majority of those riffs and a majority of the vocals. And um, I think you know, just his songwriting is what made that pretty cool. You know, Mike and those guys wrote the more mellower stuff. Like I think Street Ready's on that record. Yes. And um, you know, Hideaway I think is on that record too. Thunder. Yeah, Thunder. Thunder. That was I think that was a Mike. Uh, Mike thing with Danny Lane, but Jeff wrote the vocals, you know? Ooh. So, uh, um, it was okay. I, 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 I thought it was an okay record. You know, I thought, I thought the, I thought the songs were killer, but I just wasn't really happy with how they sounded. You know? So is that a Michael Wagner issue? Nah, I think it's, it's just all of us and, you know, not, I mean, me, you know, being able to get good drum sounds, get a fat bass tone get a ballsy mix, you know, but the, you know, once something's recorded, you can only do so much with it, you know, because Kevin Beamish was supposed to mix that puppy. Um, but then Ireland said, let's go to Michael Wagner. Cause I, I you know, I guess uh, who knows what was going on, you know, I mean, I, I would have much rather, you know, went back to Randy Burns or some, some of the guys that were doing Judas or, you know, Iron Maiden, if we could have got those guys doing, it, I think it would have sounded a little more proper for what I think Leather Wolf should have sounded like, you know? Uh, take a chance is still my le favorite Leather Wolf song to this day. So take a chance is on that one too. You, you like that one, huh? That's and that's not one that I mean that that yeah. That, I think the chorus. I yeah, love the way it builds. You never used to play it that much, but it, it was a good song. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah. It's another Jeff song, you know. That that mic that vocal on that core like where he like kind of builds up to that. I, I'm not going to try to do it, <laughs> but yeah, I love that chorus. And so you know. Leather Wolf is one of those bands and like, just did you guys that struggle, you know, in the early eighties when you're coming up to kind of figure out like what this band is because this, the eighties scene was so it was hair metal. And then you had like thrash coming out of like San Francisco and you had Slayer and Metallica. Where did you guys kind of struggle to find an identity when you were first coming out? What was that like? Um, I just didn't really think about that stuff, you know. Yeah, you just were just you just did I just you like go practice, play, and play shows. And um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, and, you know, and, and Jerry, Kerry, and Jeff, and Mike, um, you know, they I, they were writers. You know, they they were writing that stuff. So um, I don't know if they were even thinking about that stuff when they were doing their thing. You know, you know that, but that would be a good question for Jeff. You know, because uh, you know he he did a majority of of the writing. You know, for the cool stuff. But um, I don't, I don't, I don't see his style really changing ever because of thrash or punk or whatever, you know, stepping in to the industry and you know s selling records. It always, he, it always just seemed to be the same, you know. It's maybe an ultimate example of a band that just did what you do, and then whatever happened around you, whatever. I mean, that's kind of admirable because a lot of bands had to hop on a bandwagon to get somewhere yeah we were never we never had label pressure we never had you know someone telling us what to do you know we had some management had opinions which everyone's gonna but no one was really uh was really telling us what to do you know i i think after street ready uh you know we still didn't jump on a big tour we still didn't we still didn't you know have much success you know we were close but I think after that, you know, you, you got to start thinking about your future, you know, paying your bills and what are you going to do? You know what I mean? And um, that's when I think um, the writing style changed a little bit. And then during that process, uh, me and Paul were canned and those guys went out to play Hail Mary, you know, which is just a whole different gig. But um, I mean, I'm just glad we had the freedom to do what we what we wanted to do when we were doing it, you know. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm grateful that... Um, you know, we got to make uh, three records, you know, without much drama, you know. Well, you, um, we talked about Mike before. I mean, he's 
been in and out. Uh, he was, you know, you guys were back together for quite a few years there. Is there, is there, what, it, what about that dynamic just doesn't work anymore? Is there, is there a personal thing? Is it musical? What? Um, you know, Mike is Mike. Mike likes blues. He likes more Mellor stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm a little more, um, heavy. How do you say it? I'm a little more intricate in what I like. And I, I just, uh, Mike didn't want to write with me. He doesn't really like uh, the direction I try to move with what I like, you know. So at, at the end of the day, neither one neither one of us was wrong. It's just we weren't right for each other at the end of the day. Yeah. So it was a, uh, you know, it, uh, I just wanted Leather Wolf to be like the first record, and I wanted to, to even if you can get it more insane, I was in. And if you want to take it to a little more fluff side, then I don't want to be part of it, you know. And that's sticking to your guns in the ultimate way. That goes back to the beginning. And I love the direction and I, the album that was because uh, Kill the Hunted, I think, is a stamp of what the last, you know, four years of this band uh, and what it is now. So do you feel like going forward, now that it's been a year in the in the rear view, uh, is there, are you already thinking about another record at this um, point? Well, we're, we're going to release a record. Uh, it's going to have two new songs on it that we didn't release last time, but it's going to have like Spirits in the Wind, uh, Black Knight, Gypsies and Thieves, Spider, The Calling, um, Spirits in the Wind that we re that we re-recorded. Re you know, so, um, you know. That's like, where you had George and George Lynch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so, gotcha, so okay. It's going to have the quality of Thunder. I mean, did you hear Thunder? Oh, God, yes. Yeah, so it's going to be that level of, of production, you know, it's so it's huge. Gonna sound pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you know, I just I get to go back in time and do some stuff that I thought should sound a little more ballsy, you know. That you're, you're I mean, so what were you listening to in the early eighties? What what formed your uh, sort of path here? Because you stuck to your guns. You like the heavier stuff. Where so I'm guessing it was a, uh, you know, probably Deep Purple, Zeppelin, Sabbath. I mean, that pretty much. Yeah, yeah. And I liked Yes. I liked Rush. Ah. I liked Michael Jackson, Peter Gabriel. Yes. You know. Uh, so like liked, very progressive, more progressive stuff. Yeah. Al Di Miola, John McLaughlin, Papa DeLucia. I thought those guys were just freaking phenomenal, you know. And uh, I have a classical history. So it's, I'm just, you know, more into stuff that has movement and that, you know, has some intricacies to how you do it, you know, and and when you can get four, three guitar players and a bass player doing it together and making it sound good, to me that's good music, you know. Are you somebody that do you feel like that you have peers in the you know from from your time? I mean that you maybe still would like to play shows with that, or I mean, like I said, Leather Wolf is almost like its own entity. But do you feel like there's bands that like oh you're friends with back in the day or ones that you would like to play with now or? Are you guys kind of lone wolf, so to speak? I don't know what that means. Play a show together or play in the band with somebody? No, no, not like play in the band with someone. Just like that you would, if, okay, you guys are playing at the Whiskey in April, that, hey, like we'd like to share the bill and do a show with, I don't know. Well, um, I, I, I always try to do that. I always try to make it a, a co-headlining thing, you know, with with like, you know, like Armored Saint or, yeah, or exactly. Rex That's, or... Right. You know some of those bands that um Raven or Ranger Witch any of yeah 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 it'd be cool but it's it's just hard it's hard to make it happen yeah yeah of course or Agent Steel you ever remember those guys yeah I do <laughs> yeah I talked to I talked to one you know he's doing a record right now and um I tried to uh, we might do a show at Nam and I'm I'm trying to talk to him to to play and he goes oh I'll look into it I'll I'll see if we can pull it off because he plays in a couple other bands you know. Because I, I, it seems like that you guys fit into your own category, and that's that's the one of the highest compliments I can pay Leatherwolf is that you don't say like, oh yeah, like, well, who, you know, who do who does Leatherwolf sound like? I mean, this is the record. Who's doing that kind of music? There's elements, but it's not. You know, I don't know. Like, I couldn't liken it to anything. I some of the production match some of the. Like you said, you weren't a big fan of the production. I think some of the production on Street Ready matched some of just what was going on at the time, but as a band and a, and a sound, it was distinct into its own. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I see what you're saying about the production. 
Yeah. So I recorded the World Asylum. I'm, I, um, the world is uh, the king of the kill the hunted, and um, you know, I just got it to sound what I thought what I liked, and you know, actually people liked it, so it turned out great. And you know, you get someone like Randy Burns mixing it, you know, that's just a whole nother level of you know mixing. You know, well, so I got lucky there. So tremendous. I I mean, Dean, I'm. I'm just so glad we got to pull this off because it was a touch and go there for a minute. Yeah. But it's finally happened. Leather Wolf finally represented here on the road to rock. Um, Dean, it's just been a pleasure. I, I can't tell you what a, what a fan of I am of uh, everything that Leather Wolf has done. And I hope everybody will check out the the new album and we'll look forward to, to what's next in the website, leatherwolfmetal.com. That's where you can get it all, man. That's where you can get yeah, all. Guys. You. See you soon. We'll be playing in your town. Hopefully really soon. Get it here. I got I got just the venue for K I'm in Kansas City. I got just the venue. It's a place called Knuckleheads. It's like the most perfect Leatherwolf venue ever. I I could connect the dots if need be. I want it. It's gotta happen. Promise. Got it. Thank you so much, sir. Ciao.